What's up, Legends? Welcome back to another episode of Between Two Barrels podcast. I'm your host, Opie, and joined by the co-host and manager of managers, b What's up, B? No. A little bit of pain. Ooh. Um, Yeah. Uh, we had an impromptu river float cleanup yesterday mm. with the production crew um, here at Tennessee Legend Distillery. Uh, one of the guys is going to be leaving from here in the Sevier County area, moving to uh, our Cookville uh, yeah. area, uh, Crawford. Yesterday when I was leaving, they were having a little farewell. Over here at the brewery. At the brewery, yep. yeah. Um, he's a funny one. I like Crawford. Oh, yeah. Um, He's moving to Cookville, so... We, but still staying with the company. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh we got out got out on the river. Um was smart enough to put sunscreen on my arms and shoulders, back of my neck, ears, all that stuff. Uh was like, you know, eh, I'm not gonna worry about the legs. You know, I could use fine. a little bit more color. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll, um, hit, I'll hit shade spots. I'll get how back. wrong was I? <laughs> Um, because the river was moving a little bit faster than what I typically like to be out on the water for, uh, especially the big water, uh, bigger water uh, for around the local area here. Um, at times we got up to naturally without, you know, paddling assist uh, about four, four and a half miles an hour. And Ooh. yeah, on the water, of course. That's, on the water, that's quick. It's kind of moving. Yeah, that's moving. Uh, relative. Um, while you're looking down at the water, it doesn't seem like it, but whenever you, you know, take a second and look up at the bank, you're like, holy crap, stuff's moving by me really quickly. Uh, and then at one point in time, whenever we were getting about to the place where we were going to be disembarking, um, I had my depth finder, which, uh, one of the cool things about it, it has a thing that will also measure your speed. Oh. And with paddling assist, I managed to get up to eight miles an hour um, on the river. So that was kind of cool. I thought water uh, speeds. Yeah. I also had to slow slow down considerably uh, because the natural flow in that particular area picked back up. And this again was. When you started. Uh, we went to the uh, tailwater of the dam and there was a couple of the turbines that were open. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um, you so really did make a day of it. Yeah. Uh, and then we exited, um, at a spot that was, uh, Andrew's family, uh, mm -hmm. has some land, um, down Boyd's Creek. So we went past the bridge there at knife works and just a little bit further down, oh, wow. uh, there. And that's where eventually we had exited, uh, at that point. But yeah, it was, a uh, it was a fun trip. Um, I, I'm not going to say exactly what kind of beverages, but there were definitely more beverages than bags of trash, Bever more beverages consumed than bags of trash collected. Um, but we did manage to get a decent amount of stuff picked up off the river as we were going down through there. That's good. Um, some things of course that we couldn't get because the water was moving again, a little bit swifter than what typically I like to be out on the water on. Um, and then also they were rather lodged down Ooh. in the sand, you know, things like tires, stuff like that, that, that unfortunately commonly find their way into the rivers and waterways around this area. Um, but before that, uh, over into the weekend, um, I'm definitely never far from a body of water this time of year, uh, was able to get out on the water with, um, Bonnie and her husband mm. Saturday, um, he had purchased a kayak and, uh, she was kind of hesitant on the fence, didn't know how things would go. So I had an additional one, um, let them borrow it. We got out on the water, got into some fish. Well, another one of those situations where I caught fish and people got to <laughs> watch, watch me it. catch fish, but, um, um, anyway, um, that was Saturday. Uh, Thursday, last week, after we recorded last week, I uh, wound up going to a Smokies game, which uh, was fun. Yeah, Smokies. Uh, Thirsty Thursdays, where it's $3, 20-ounce mm. uh, adult beverages, or at least beer anyway, on tap. 
Uh, that was fantastic. Went with the mother-in-law. Uh, Bonnie and her husband actually joined us for that as well. Um, but Sunday uh, was all about spending time uh, with my wife and um, unbeknownst to her. Well, she knew that something was happening and she knew that some family was coming in because her anxiety would not have let me have it as a complete surprise for everything. Sure. Especially with the possibility of people, you know, uh, might needing to stay the night or something like that at the house. I couldn't just spring something like that sure. on her. Um, so yeah, um, got everybody mine, invited and came down. the same way. Right. Shoot. Got everybody, uh, invited, came down, um, her mom made a cake, a uh, um, mandarin orange cake, uh, mm. mandarin oranges and pineapple mixed with uh, whipped cream, and then it's just a yellow cake, and then you put the, that combination is basically your frosting, your icing for the cake, and it's fantastic, um, and I don't want to say healthy, but I mean, it's not as bad per se sure. as as a little more natural know, um like a a, a powdered sugar buttercream yeah. you know frosting or something like that may be concerned but yeah um as part of that we all uh met up for breakfast mm -hmm. at cracker barrel uh one of the family's favorite places to eat um had a really good breakfast ironic um and then um we went over to polka dot pots over at uh, the wilderness, where you can paint your own ceramic pottery. Okay. I mean, they have different little figurines. You can do plates, uh, coin banks uh, of different Morristown styles, a paint pig, all those different like types that. of things. And you paint it, and they'll fire it. You can pick it mm -hmm. up like the next day or whatever. So really takes on a life of its own after it gets in that kiln. Oh, for sure, it changes for sure drastically <laughs> yeah that's and i'm glad that they put up the little things to show you this is what this color is going to look yeah. like after it gets fired this is not what it looks like and everything it's else. So, um choose wisely but yeah um something fun if you're going to be in the area especially if you're staying at the wilderness i recommend going over there it's really fun um they provide you with all the materials that you'll need to be able to uh um create some really cool works of art uh, oh. i had a great time i did a gnome mug uh, oh. that's going to turn into my uh, chocolate milk mug that's good um beyond yeah i'm everyone 40, needs a chocolate milk mug. about to be a 43 year old adult and so, i have a specific you know chocolate, you milk, chocolate mug. milk mug um prior to it has been the uh barrel mug from the uh root beer vendor mm. from fan fanboy yep. oh, yeah yeah uh, definitely enjoy that one. That one also happens to be my uh adult beverage uh a good cup, one. cup a as good well. One <laughs> yeah. So um yeah. Uh but other than that, uh we did have the R V show, mm -hmm. uh the um Music City Motorhome Expo in Lebanon yesterday. Um because it was Katie's actual birthday and yeah. We had some fun with that and that's something I guess that we can save for next episode because i've already gone on for a few minutes yeah. and i haven't even said much of anything yet um didn't get a chance to go but from what i understand it seemed to be a a, a fairly fun event um do have some notes that that everyone's leaving in after i posted a message in our uh chat thread on sure. slack here yeah. um but yeah we're we're gonna take what we learned from this one and and apply what to do, what not Nothing. to do, of course, to the next one, and then yeah. just continue going on from there. Absolutely. Uh, what about you, man? Let's see, the weekend. Um, not the artist. Not the artist. <laughs> uh, actually, recently found out uh, um, that in 20, and I think I texted you about it, in 2027, WWE has... Uh, solidified and committed to WrestleMania in Nashville and the, the, the first big event in the new yeah. Titan Stadium. So already looking forward to that. Got that news, and I was like, oh, we have a TLD in Nashville. We need to really do it up. Like, start, like, sending messages to Triple H and saying, like, hey, Hunter. <laughs> right. Hey, Mr. Levesque, um, we have a distillery. 
Do you have any need for any alcohol? <laughs> or like, I'll take a body slam. I don't care. Like, right. Get me in the ring somehow. <laughs> you know, this is brought to you by uh, uh, Tennessee Legend Distillery. Um, slam a shot. Slam a slam, shot. Slam yeah. a, a fan. Slam a fan. Brought to you by Tennessee Legend Distillery. Oh, that'd be great. Um, so over the I'd, weekend. I'd love to have a wrestling We actually moment. started like looking ahead and like in our group our wrestling group text going like all right start planning now because this is one right, that we're going to want to be all weekend this is three hours away from us we're yeah, going to want to be there we're going to want to do everything because the they went because nowadays wrestlemania is not just a day it's literally an entire week week yeah like they do conferences and like supporting local uh, um charities and like they they go out and like do stuff like that and meet and greets and they're they'll be there in nashville doing like helping the independent circuit and like hosting independent wrestling events and tryouts and and then they'll do nxt and they'll do this taping and then they'll do smackdown there and then they'll do mania weekend then they'll do the raw the next day at bridgestone i was like so start saving now because we're going all week right this is a Monday through Monday. And then thing you also have Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then there's Hall of Fame. So literally Mania, in 40 years later, is now went from a one-night thing to it's a week. An it's entire an entire week, week event. So it's we'll, it's the, the Super Bowl yeah, of it, wrestling. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we already started kind of dropping, you know, like ideas and, and little, little uh, nuggets of just be ready. I know it's people are like, well, it's like three years away. Uh, it goes fast. It'll right. be here before you know it. So plan now. Um, we also started making plans for the fan, upcoming at Fanboy Expo. Uh, Josh and I are going to jump on a call uh, a little bit later during like a 10-minute break or something and uh, uh, kind of solidify those new plans with the, the promoter. Um, it's going to be an even bigger deal this year. Um Without divulging too much early, um, we are going to be... Is this something that needs to be more on the Patreon thing? Probably, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait till Patreon <laughs> to, to, to provide on the scenes. But yeah, if you're not a Patreon, we're, we're going to drop some knowledge on Patreon. So become And this a is about member. the Knoxville Fanboy yes. Expo coming yeah. up this July. Yes, coming up this One July. One month. One a month away. away. Yes. Um, as for the Achilles, uh, the prednisone has slowly started to finally help. Um, because like in, in the, the doctor's appointment, he said, you know, this prednisone steroid may give you a false sense of security. Like you'll like within a few days, you'll start thinking like I can, I could I can play do. soccer on this. Yeah. And six, seven days into this 12 pack, of prednisone i was like i'm not getting that false sense of security it still hurts <laughs> like it's well I mean, known. <laughs> and madison was like yeah it's it's weird because i've never met anyone that but in the same vein like i could take a hydro for pain and it doesn't affect me the way it affects a lot of people right um uh, a a benadryl doesn't affect me the way it affects a lot of people so I think that a lot of it is I have this tolerance to these strong hyperactive liver. Yeah, a hyperactive liver, basically. Um, so, but I'm now off that 12 day pack. It's feeling okay. I can walk a little more normal. I still have to keep the brace on when I'm on it, except for rehearsals. I can take the brace off and do what I. I'm not going full out still, probably till right. closer to actual showtime. Um, but it is getting a little better, but there are some nights where it'll say, mm, did a little too much there, bro. Right. Slow it down. And it's and it's those to where you need to <laughs> yeah. heed the warning. Yeah, for so sure. I'm getting a little better at, at heeding the body's voice, um, as annoying as it is. Uh but we are going on vacation this coming week. Nothing crazy. Um, a few days in the Northeast. Uh, Madison's never seen that area. We're going to join the family at a, a Nationals game. Okay. In D.C. Uh, which is <laughs> my sister and brother called me two days ago and said, uh, 
our ticket to the Nationals, and they're facing the Braves, which I can't stand the Braves. Um, I'm a Reds fan. So we're going to a Nationals game, and then the last thing we're going to do before coming back is a Baltimore Orioles game in Maryland. Okay. Also playing the Braves. <laughs> All right. I'm like, damn, I have to say this twice. I hope they both lose. Um, but I, li- I like the Orioles. Nationals, I don't really care much about, but I love the game of baseball. So Right. Um. So she, my sister is like, our Nationals tickets get us into the post-game concert. It's a special night. I was like, oh, cool. Who's who's the artist? Flo Rida. I was like, so we're going to a Nationals game and a Flo Rida concert is going to break out afterwards. I was like, we are staying, right? She said, hell yeah, we're staying. Are you kidding? Nice. <laughs> Flo Rida? Nice. <laughs> like, oh, no. We're going to get lit. Madison might see a side of me that she's never seen before. <laughs> like early college hip hop fan, Tyler. <laughs> um, Flow Rider fan, Tyler, that right. existed for like a semester in college. <laughs> um, but it's going to, but we're looking forward to it. It's just a chill. Like last year we were at Disney and it was long and hot. And so we went to the, we're known to the Northeast area. We're going to see Hershey Park and, Already planning that, pondering on a wheelchair because that's a lot of walking or a scooter. Yeah. Um, because she has POTS and she can't, which is a heart issue uh, and circulatory issue, so she doesn't need to be walking in the heat off. But it's not going to be as hot as Orlando. So we were like, this summer, let's just take a chill a few days away, a little cooler climate than the south and Florida area, not really any beaches. You know, let's just... Catch a couple ball games. There you go. Stay at home, cook dinner, play some board games. A more chill summer vacation. And it's mainly because of everyone's schedule. It is just my schedule with Madison's. No one's as open as school in Chattanooga. Peyton's the volleyball coach at Cleveland State and in the Air Force. Mom is is working with this nonprofit in Chattanooga. Like our, and I, then there's my brother and sister-in-law, their schedule, and the kids, and it's harder and harder these days to line schedules up for sure just to get away as a family. So looking forward to it, but, uh, yeah, going to catch a couple of baseball games, maybe eat some, uh, Chesapeake seafood in Maryland. Mm. Check out the Marina home of the old Bay seasoning, the old Bay seasoning. I will put old Bay on everything this weekend. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, going to be a lot of fun. Mallory absolutely swears by the Old Bay flavored uh, mm. goldfish. I haven't tried that. I don't, I don't dabble into flavors, like, which is weird. So, like, when someone says, like, my favorite Dorito is ranch Doritos, I'm like, those taste nothing like ranch. Right. Like, I don't know why they're called cool ranch. You dip something in ranch dressing. And then you eat a Dorito, you're clearly tasting something different. You're going to be like, this is says ranch, but this ranch tastes different. So like when someone's like, oh, it's pizza flavored. Okay, eat pizza and then have a pizza flavored combo and tell me they taste the same. Right. The flavored stuff, I'm like, this tastes nothing like it. Nah. Like when someone's like, oh, it's Dr. Fe- Pepper flavored jelly bean. This tastes nothing like Dr. Pepper. So... I'm weird and finicky when it comes to, like, flavored things as opposed to, like, because, like, banana-flavored stuff tastes nothing like an actual banana. Right. Watermelon-flavored stuff tastes nothing like an actual watermelon. So I I haven't tried Old Bay seasoning goldfish, so, but I love Old Bay. Well, it's one of those that might be a little bit easier considering that it's just dry seasoning. Dry seasoning on a cracker. So. But yeah, uh, oh. quite a you know, a lot of stuff going on. It's summer. All right. <clears throat> summer is here. Summer is here. So if you're looking for some things to do over the weekend in Sevier County, uh, there are some things you can get involved in. Nothing, a whole lot of special highlighted events, but you know, some things to to kind of keep on your radar for the 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 month of June. Uh, actually, this weekend. Uh, is one thing, and that is the LMU Medical Education Conference uh, will be at the Sevierville Convention Center this weekend, um, June 7th through 9th. 
and that should be, as we said in the last episode, a well-placed thing because in the same building is the Acro Flippin' Fun uh, Gymnastic Championships, also June 7th through 9th. Yeah. So luckily there will be medical experts standing by <laughs> in case a kid gets hurt. Imagine we'll get a lot of the parents. Oh, yeah, from, from the that, gymnastics you know, coming over. They've been watching flipping and turning and, and, and fun stuff all, all day. They're going to be tired. They're going to want a little libation. So they're going to come literally 100 yards away and uh, sample with Tennessee Legend Distillery. Uh, we absolutely welcome that. Uh, so for more information, you can check that out on the Sevierville calendar of events. Uh, for the Acro Flipping Fun, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, you can go to usagym.org and uh, check out for more information. However, Ancient Lore Village always got some fun fantasy stuff going on. Yes, the Sunday brunches are in full force and will end. We'll be taking a brief hiatus uh, in January of 2025 and uh, majority of February, and they should start up either the end of February or uh, early to mid-March of 2026. Um, of course, the best way to keep up with any information of anything that will be going on over at Ancient Lore Village is to go to their website, or you can give them a call at 865-200-2434. Definitely make sure and ask them about the D&D nights, which have started back up. Mm -hmm. Every Thursday night throughout the month of June, gather your party and host your next game session where you can immerse yourselves in a realm where fantasy comes to life. As well as that going on, June 7th, there will be another book club dinner at Ancient Lore Village for Sarah J. Ma's Throne of Glass series. This event will be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. as twilight descends upon the village. Guests will gather under the starlit sky for an evening filled with literary discussions, delectable cuisine, and immersive experiences. But... If you are going to be visiting Tennessee Legend Distillery at any point in time while you are here in Sevier County, if you're going to be going to our Winfield Dunn or our Highway 66 location, store hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. And we are open, of course, seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at our Newport Highway location. Now, if you are going to be following us on our social media sites, and we definitely recommend doing so, you can follow us on Facebook by looking up Tennessee Legend Distillery. And we definitely invite you to follow all three locations. But if you're only going to follow one, follow the one that is closest to you. If you are in the Nashville area, of course, you will search Nashville, Cookville area, look up Cookville. Or if you're near the Sevier County area, just look up Sevier County. And like I said, if you are out of town and you can't follow all three of them, follow one of them, pick one, whichever one your favorite one may be. If Instagram is more your speed, you can find us by looking up TN Legend. That's T N L E G E N D for all locations. Nash, N A S H for Nashville, C K V L for Cookville, and Sevco, S E V C O for the Sevier County location. And one of the main reasons you want to do that is to be able to keep up with any and all of the new stuff that we have going on here at Tennessee Legend Distillery. Speaking of, we are a very few short days away from releasing or launching our very first pre-order or reservation system for our most limited products that will be coming out starting here this next month, we are anticipating a Independence Day or an Independence Weekend release of two very limited products, which, like we said, uh, one is creating quite a stir, a buzz, if you will, and the other one is a tale as old as time. And no, we are not talking about Beauty and the Beast. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, something that's a bit more prehistoric. <laughs> if you will. Uh, of course, the best way to keep up with any and all that, like we said, is to not only follow us on the social media sites, but follow us or just check out the Tennessee Legend Distillery website. And the best way to be able to link to all of those without having to search for everything is just to, boom, go to the link right up here, the studio66.com page, 
and you'll be able to link to every single one of those. You know, this might be the there. most LTO item in my three plus years of working for the company. Like, I've never seen so little created. Yes. Like, it's literally like, so like if we were to, if you were to do like the math of it and be like, okay, so one barrel of our king snake fills what, 250 bottles? 250-ish, yeah. Here and there, depending on stuff. One of these products is like less than that. Right at. Like right at that, like in existence. Yeah. Period. 50 bottles. Period. Ever. Like, I, I was like, I mean, I mean this we, is we've a, done, we've this done is... LTOs. It's like, yeah, there, we've done about 10, 12 barrels of it. So there's, you know, a oh, thousand, yeah, talking about the single barrel and or stuff like that. Yeah. But this is it. Like, 250 bottles of this thing is going to exist. Of the Honey King Snake is going to exist. And Depending on how well it sells, how well we may, you know, maybe in a year or so, maybe, yeah. One done, but yeah. Yeah. But never again. Very, very limited. But also, even with that, like, so much exclusivity goes into, like, each barrel. Like, the temperature it was kept in, the barrel it is, the number barrel it is. The So, even if, like, a year, two, three years down the line, we do the honey again. It's not going to be the same no. as these 250 nope. bottles. Nope. It'll be a different build or it'll be yep. – something will be different about it. So I just think, like, if you put that into words, like, how, like, exclusive this run is compared to some other LTO things we've done, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like, you're literally going to be fighting people. No, I'm, okay. We do not condone violence. We don't welcome a cage. We're not going to put up, build a cage up here and say like, all right, winner gets the first bottle. We're not doing that, but this is going to be a big deal. Like this is an exciting launch. And like I said, in the last two episodes, you're going to have to fight the employees too. Yeah. We have to reserve the same as you. So we've got 50 employees and each one of them is probably going to be clamoring for one. Well, no, that's 50 one of each regular least. employees. Yeah. yeah. Or, or two of you know, we're only allowed a certain amount. Right. You can and only there's... you can only reserve a certain amount. You can't like like somebody can't walk up here, drop thousands of dollars, say I reserve all two hundred and fifty of them. They're all mine. We're not allowing that. Nope. So, wow, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm I'm very excited, but it's also going to be one of those things where you don't touch it unless it's a special occasion. Right. <laughs> right. For like, sure. hey, Tyler, can we can we touch that king snake honey no, no. this is not call for king snake honey i only <laughs> got one bottle this occasions. is not an occasion for it <laughs> i'll tell you when there's an occasion for it <laughs> that one might turn into a post-apocalyptic bottle <laughs> well things are ending so drink up <laughs> right <laughs> uh but i'm very excited a lot of a lot of fun stuff happening here at tld and even north down the line than these these two products you know We've got a fall release of stuff. We've got a Christmas release of stuff. We have got stuff releasing all throughout 2024, uh, not just with us, but our partnerships with Anthem. So I'm telling you. Yeah, slightly delayed uh, seasonal release, but we have moved into our seasonal whiskey and our seasonal mm-hmm. moonshine for right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, being the uh, peach whiskey and the um, – uh, fiery mango yes. moonshine uh, still rolling right now. We may be switching over to uh, the peach moonshine. Uh, no, not peach. I'm sorry. Uh, Actually, peach moonshine, especially for those who have been supporters of TLD for a few years, there's like 11 bottles left in existence. Yeah, there's not much at all. So if you are wanting not peach coming moonshine, back, like, you know, yeah. it's vaulted. It's not seasonal. It's going in the vault. So yep. if you're a Peach Moonshine fan, you have the opportunity to get the last in existence. But uh, the one I was going for was the Root Beer Float. Root Beer Float has slightly been delayed uh, in terms of its seasonal release, but it is going to be released here hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Okay. And again, of course, the best way to keep up with any and all that information yes. is to follow us on the social media sites. Absolutely. Um, speaking of our friends over at Gatlinburg Brewing Company, you know, yesterday was a little farewell to Crawford, our employee that we talked about. 
They've got so, a lot of stuff happening this month. Uh, for instance, they still, every Monday, do the uh, Family Feud style trivia at 6 p.m. Um, they are now sold out of Old Verdan's Dry Season. Oh, no! They have kept just enough to get them through, and then they're going to start making their own. Okay. Locally crafted dry seasoning will be GBC's dry season pepper blend. So looking forward to that to see what they come up with. Uh, a new limited craft beer selection, though, that they have still a little bit of at GBC, but also other places, is the Hoppin County Lines 2024. Uh, it is a hazy IPA with Emerald Spire, Gemini, Willow Creek 6.2%, and it is brewed in collaboration with Gatlinburg Brewing Company and Tri Hop Brewery in Black County. Now, it is currently available at GBC in both downtown Gatlinburg as well as on Highway 66 beside us at TLD. Uh, you can also find it at Tri Hops Tap Room and at Hops and Hounds in Oak Ridge. Uh, the taco pizza, though, gone. Going, going, gone. The supplies are up. So the next pizza of the moment, though, to look out for, so follow them also on Instagram and Facebook, is the Italian Grinder inspired pizza coming very soon so go follow gatlinburg brewing company for the drop and release of that i'm always uh excited about even if i know that i will not eat their pizza at the moment because right we haven't really gone into huge detail about me in this aspect i'm a very picky eater like i don't eat onions and peppers and chunky tomatoes like i can eat thin mexican salsa at a mexican restaurant but the more authentic a salsa gets i won't touch it right because like i'm like there's no juice it's all chunk <laughs> like what am i gonna dip um so even though i know that like most of these pizzas they create i'm not gonna put in my mouth but the brains that they have over oh there, yeah just to the crafting in general i respect the hell out of they have got some brilliant craft pizza minds at gatlinburg brewing company uh and beers as well uh Stu Stu's beer mind as just what if we do this and this he's kind of like our justin you know he says what if we, what if we go this together right together and oh that didn't work so let's do this uh it's really fun to talk craft beer with Stu. it's like it's like talking to dr frankenstein <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, yeah be on the lookout for that italian grinder inspired pizza uh they are also hosting the beer garden at the smoky mountain food fest at severe county fairgrounds this weekend, June 8th and 9th. Definitely plan on attending. Mm -hmm. That looks fun. I won't be in town, but you have to drink a couple beers for me. So they will also be doing another old school bingo night on June 18th. Went so successfully, they're doing it again. Nice. So good for them. And also, they will be at the Hops in the Hills Beer Fest in Maryville. Uh, Maryville. For those of you who are just moving here, not Maryville. Merville. Merle. Uh, on June 22nd. So any of those dates that we just announced, come by. Say hi to, to GBC. Tell them Tennessee Legend Distillery sent you. And uh, give them a big hug and a hi and have a beer on us. There you go. Uh, and tell them that, uh, tell, her, that um, tell them that Opie and Brian sent you. So... On the last episode, we discussed what fuels Tennessee, the tourism, the taxes, and the fines. Hopefully you learned a little bit. I learned a lot. I did. Um, I wish I had learned like even more in detail like how to make some of that stuff work even more for me. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> As a citizen. Uh, but hopefully you learned a little bit and uh, maybe learned enough to where maybe the next time you – you walk into a distillery in, in the Sevier County area and someone says, can I see your ID? You don't follow it with a smart aleck remark. Right. Maybe you learned enough to just be like, you know, that's not a funny joke anymore to these people because they hear that same line every, every day. <laughs> so, yes, you can check that out wherever you listen to your podcast at or on Tennessee Legend Distillery's YouTube page. You can watch it and see how good looking and pretty the hosts of between two barrels podcasts are uh but uh since that last episode uh we have some new listeners and watchers yeah um well it's weird 
to say that in this day and age, that's a, a great thing. We have new listeners and watchers. When back in the day, if someone's like, I got a, someone watching me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I got this new watcher. He just, uh, he watches. That's that's not, yeah. Used to be a scary thing. Now we're in the world of like, we need listeners and watchers. Uh, but so thank you for tuning in. Any any highlighted areas that are tuning in for the first time? If you if you mm. want to go back and check out some old episodes, learn some stuff about the state of Tennessee. Um, continue to follow us. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you know when new content's coming out. Yep. Um, where where are some of our new highlighted listens? I know you you like the Duluth, Duluth Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. Uh, right. and then Milledgeville, Georgia. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So thank you for tuning in from all yeah, over the definitely country. definitely appreciate it. And so this week, however, we are continuing our adventure around Tennessee, highlighting things that many may not know the origins of, possibly the origins that affect that they took part in Tennessee or started in Tennessee. Today, we are stopping at America's favorite country kitchen and general store, Cracker Barrel. Yep. That's right. Cracker Barrel. You're welcome, America. When Between Two Barrels podcast returns. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Welcome back, Legends. And we are discussing America's favorite country, kitchen and general store, Cracker Barrel. That's right. Cracker Barrel Old Country Store Incorporated. Is an American chain of restaurants and gift stores with a southern country theme. The company's headquarters are in Lebanon, Tennessee, where we just were doing an event for the RVs. Yep. Uh, the uh, where Cracker Barrel was actually founded in Lebanon, Tennessee, by Dan Evans in 1969. Same year we went to the moon. Yes. We created Cracker Barrel. The chain's early locations were positioned near interstate highway exits in the southeastern and midwestern United States, but expanded across the country during the 90s and 2000s. As of August 10th, 2023, the company operates 660 stores in 45 different states. Wow, it seems like there's 600 just in the state of Tennessee. I know. <laughs> Every exit, Every you, exit <laughs> you pass, it's like, yeah, there's a Cracker Barrel. It's like, Jesus. Uh, so the menu is based on traditional Southern cuisine mm -hmm. with appearances and decor designed to resemble an old-fashioned general store. Yeah. Each location features a front porch lined with wooden rocking chairs, a stone fireplace, and decorative artifacts from the local area. Cracker Barrel also partners with bluegrass and country artists to sell music, engages in charitable activities, and helps veterans. In the 1990s, Cracker Barrel was, however, criticized for some of its anti-LGBTQ policies and due to backlash from a majority of the country, reversed those policies. For instance, it was in their by laws, you could not work at a Cracker Barrel if you were a member. Like, right. Like back in the day, the people wouldn't hire colored people. Right. Cracker Barrel wouldn't hire anyone of, and if they found out you were secretly, they'd fire you. But they reversed those decisions due to a lot of outrage in the country. In the early 2000s, Cracker Barrel found it itself as subject of many civil rights lawsuits and a U.S. Justice Department investigation, too. All was eventually settled in court. That's why the prices of everything went up. Yes. <laughs> to pay for the court costs. You can find licensed products in grocery stores under the name CB Old Country Store. Mm -hmm. Now, they had to rebrand to that after a 2013 lawsuit from Kraft, who sold cheese under the title... Cracker Barrel cheese. So the restaurant Cracker Barrel had to change its logo for in-store because Kraft won the lawsuit. That's... <laughs> wow. so much sense. <laughs> right? 
why don't you take us a little bit through the history sure. of OCB? As you had mentioned, uh, founded in 1969 by Dan Evans, a representative for Shell Oil, who developed the restaurant and gift store concept initially as a plan to improve gasoline sales. It was designed to resemble the traditional country store that he remembered from his childhood with a name chosen to give it a southern country theme. Cracker Barrel was intended to attract the interest of highway travelers. The name comes from the barrels of soda crackers that could be found for sale in small town stores across the American South in the early 1900s. So... It's an it's, oyster cracker. It's yeah. It's <laughs> not a. It's not a derogatory person or a term. Yeah, about white used people. To describe white people. Yeah. Yes. Um, soda crackers. Yes. Now, people in the days of old Cracker Barrels would stand up around and catch up the way that people do in the office water coolers of the modern era. Of wow. course, just standing around munching on crackers instead of. How's Craig doing? Oh, he's doing all right. His hips out of line. They gotta go. Oh well, Jesse's in the hospital again. Yep. Now the first restaurant was built close to I forty in Lebanon, Tennessee, and opened on September nineteenth, nineteen sixty nine. That's uh, one day before my wedding anniversary, mm-hmm. the twentieth. Uh, there would be an easy way to remember. Hey, the day before we got married, but back in 1969s, whenever the first Cracker Barrel was open, uh, it opened featuring many Southern cuisines. But the but what sold the most, of course, was biscuits and gravy, grits and country ham and turnip greens. Evans incorporated Cracker Barrel in February of 1970 and soon opened more locations. Now, in the early 1970s, the firm leased land on gasoline station sites near interstate highways to build restaurants, and these early locations featured gas pumps on site. So could you imagine going and stopping in for breakfast at a Cracker Barrel and being able to fill up your gas tank? Go in, have breakfast, pay for gas. Play the peg game. (laughs) Yeah. Which... uh, Our visit that we mentioned earlier in the show, uh, whenever we were doing the catch up, yeah, uh, for my wife's birthday, uh, Mallory, her husband Dylan, and daughter, their daughter Carolina, my niece Carolina, uh, came in as well, came out and joined us, uh, and my mother in law, Mm -hmm. um, taught her the actual there's there's a little poem or whatever or a little story that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. And she taught her the the story for My the grandfather game, taught me so. that. Um, and I every will, story begins with a diamond. Yep. Yeah, I will pass it down to the nephews when they're when they get when to that age to, when they're ready to accept the knowledge. Now, as far as the it opened featuring many southern cuisines, but sold the most of biscuits and gravy, grits, country ham, and turnip greens. They're country hams. Most of the time that I have breakfast, I am having grits and country ham. And if I have dinner, turnip one of my sides. sides is going to include turnip greens. Very rarely, though, do I eat the biscuits and gravy from Cracker Barrel just because I find the the gravy to be too flowery, just for my personal likes. Oh, yeah. I agree. I don't get biscuits and gravy so, there normally. But I the was biscuits spoiled. are fine. My... my, my... My grandmother's sausage gravy, which technically I guess was my great grandmother's recipe, uh, spoiled me growing up. So now most places I, I get biscuits and gravy. I'll just go, mm, it's not as good as Granny Cunningham's. Yeah, I I won't <laughs> order biscuits and gravy outside of anywhere because like I they wind up going against my wife's and there's no comparison. Yeah, I, so which one, she actually one of the worlds that I try not to. I don't want to put that that problem on the establishments. Like it's not your fault, right? No, that your biscuits and no, gravy no. aren't as good, right? No, we're not. I don't want to do put that. that on you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not it's even going to order. It's them. not <laughs> your fault that it's your fault. Suck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to put that on you. But no, so I'm not even going to order them. Out of out of all the things that I have that I have cooked that Katie normally cooks because mm. there's a few things that I've taken and I've cooked and she's been like okay that's really good you know 
you can have it. It's, it's close or it's your thing. You can have it or whatever the case may be. But she legit, I mean, legit got mad because I made biscuits and gravy one time. And it wasn't for the fact that they were better. They were they were good. They were not as good as hers. But just for the fact that I did it and I did it succeeded. well and I succeeded at it, she's like, no. Never again. <laughs> no, you do not need to do that because I am not going to have you take all of them away. <laughs> Uh, as you far as that's everything. concerned, no, you can't have that. So, you catch all the fish, you can't have this in the gravy, too. <laughs> <laughs> you handle the fish, I'll handle the loaves, okay? Right there, you <laughs> go. The partnership. So, uh, about the 80s, though, yeah, starting a year before I was born, yes, 80 through 96 was that early first quarter of its life. Prime time for Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel became a publicly traded company in 1981 to raise funds for further expansion. And I actually did not learn what all that terminology and all that jargon meant until Batman Begins, Christopher Nolan's first movie, when they talk about Wayne going public and all that. And I never knew what that meant growing up. Right. And then it's not something that, you know, they don't teach stocks and all that nope. in school. Which is so something when I would hear things like they this company is going public, I would think like you mean nobody knew about them. I knew about them. I figured they were pretty public. Right. They have a Facebook. <laughs> That's pretty public these days. What do you mean going public? What it means is like offering to the world to buy shares. So like we yeah, you could can technically support, yeah. buy shares in Cracker Barrel, and our money would have us stock in Cracker Barrel so we'd get like a yearly check at so much. Like if we gave a dollar if we gave a hundred dollars to invest in Cracker Barrel, we ain't getting a check each year. No. Like buku's of money. So they would open it to outside this family, the rest of the world. Yeah. To buy quote unquote shares. Then they would take that money to build more restaurants. Yeah. Going public. I didn't learn that until Batman begins. Uh thank you, DC. Um, uh, so they became a publicly traded company in 81 to raise money for more stores. It That alone floated more than half a million shares, raising $10.6 million and grew 20% per year. In 1987, the company had become a chain of more than 50 units in eight different states with an annual net sales of almost $81 million a year. In 1987, that's a lot of money. That is money. a lot. The company grew consistently through the 80s and 90s, attaining a $1 billion market value by 1992. By 93, it had, ap- it ha- had revenue that nearly doubled any other family restaurant chain. So Bob Evans didn't have a chance. No, they never stood a chance. Never stood a chance against Cracker Barrel. Mrs. Winters, Bob Evans, all those other Cracker Barrel yes. shoved them in the barrel and locked it. Yep. Send them down the river like Send the down hobbits. The river. Yeah. I like that reference. Nice reference. Uh, so in 1994, the chain tested a carry-out only store called the Cracker Barrel Old Country Store Corner Market. Hmm. Whew, what a sign. <laughs> right. <laughs> in suburban residential neighborhoods. C-B-O-C-S-C-M. Are you going to the, the C-Box? In addition... It expanded. That sounds like a, a sounds medication. Like a yeah, it it's the boxum. Are you on some boxum? In addition, it expanded into new markets through the establishment of more traditional Cracker Barrel locations. The majority of them outside of outside of the South, uh, and they tested alterations to its menu to adapt to newer regions. For instance, further you go north, they don't have sweet tea and biscuits and gravy. So unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Um. The chain also added regional dishes to its menus. For instance, in its Texas locations, it offered eggs and salsa. Huevos rancheros. Yes, huevos rancheros. And Reuben sandwiches in its New York locations. Hmm. But continued to offer its original menu items in all restaurants. Cracker Barrel did not close any location from 1969 to 1995. Wow. 
when a location on American Way in Memphis, Tennessee was closed due to no longer meeting company standards. So it wasn't for the fact that they weren't doing well, I guess. It's just that they were... This no longer... Yeah, you, this is not a standard. good store. Managers were probably fired and they shut the store down. As opposed to, I would imagine, be more expensive to fix the problem. Right. Clean house. Yeah, just completely... Rehire. Wipe it. That's yeah. probably way more expensive than just, we're shutting this one down. Yeah. 1969 to 1995 before closing one location. Wow. That's insane. Talk about longevity. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you take us to, through like the 97, 2010. Sure. By September of 1997, Cracker Barrel had 314 restaurants and aimed to increase that number by 50 per year as its five-year plan. Now, they eventually closed all corner market operations in 1997 and refocused on its restaurants and gift store locations. The company's president, Ron Magruder, stated that the chain was concentrating on strengthening its core theme, offering traditional restaurants and stores owned by Cracker Barrel, increased between 1997 and 2000 to more than 420 locations. In the years 2000 and 2001, the company addressed staffing and infrastructure issues related to the rapid growth by implementing a more rigorous recruitment strategy and introducing new technology, including an order placement system. Now, the company had recently purchased the Mitchell House in Lebanon. The house had been the elementary dormitory and school for Castle Heights Military Academy, which both Dan Evans and his son attended. The school had closed in 1986, and the building had sat empty since then. Now, Cracker Barrel spent $2 million to restore the home and use it as its corporate headquarters from 1999 all the way through, through 2013. Now, in the late 90s to mid-2000s, the company focused on opening new locations in residential areas to attract local residents and workers as customers. Kind of like how right down, basically down 441 or 66, Highway 66, mm -hmm. you've got the one at the interstate, mm -hmm. you've got the one just down here past us, and as you go further into Pigeon Forge, you've got the one that's down between like traffic lights 6 and 7, yeah. and you've got one between traffic lights like 1 and 2 yeah. in Pigeon Forge. Yeah, down, down 411. There are four Cracker Barrels yep. in this town. Mm -hmm. Down a, a, we'll have to figure out how many miles it is from the Cracker Barrel out at I forty to the Cracker Barrel there in Pigeon Forge. To yeah. see how many four miles stores. it is between those four locations. Yeah, Cracker Barrels are like the Starbucks of the South. Yeah. Now the chain opened its first restaurant and gift store in the Dothan, Alabama area. This time, this was not the. However, this was the first location not located near a highway. Hmm. And in the 2000s, in the wake of incidents including charges of racial discrimination and controversy over its policy of firing gay employees, the firm launched a series of promotional activities including a nationwide book drive and a sweepstakes with trips to the Country Music Association Awards and rocking chairs among the prizes. Okay. Good old Cracker Barrel rocking chairs. So... We're in the limelight. We're getting a lot of negative press about how we're treating this marginalized society. What do we do? We start a sweepstakes to go to the Country Music Awards, and we give away rocking chairs. That'll distract everyone. It's southern thought process, I guess. <laughs> we're in the middle of Civil War. Let's invite a new steak sauce. The greatest thing ever tasted. It's update, it updated its marketing in 2006 to encourage new customers, changing the design of its highway billboard advertisements to include images of menu items. Imagine you know, driving down the that, road like, and you see... Before that, like, you, there weren't food on their billboards. It was, no, it was just their logo. It was the old guy yeah. doing the whittling or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Now you can see, like, the chicken and dumplings on a billboard. And, and like, you're like, oh, I'm oh, hungry. Yep. <laughs> yep, I'm hungry. <laughs> so let's talk about the more modern era. 2011 to today. 
By 2011, Cracker Barrel had opened more than 600 restaurants in 42 different states. The company has since began expansion to the West Coast. Uh, in 2017, the first store in the region opened in Tulation, Oregon, and their first store in California was opened the next year in Victorville. They didn't open a store in California in 2018. They didn't know what they were missing. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. It was about Whoa. time, California. <laughs> what is these bread and this gravy, man? Like, whoa, dude. Dude, you've got dry flour and wet flour. <laughs> and you're putting them Talk together. Talk about an oxymoron. I'm going to go hit the, the tubes after this. <laughs> so, in 2019, Cracker Barrel purchased Maple Street, mm, Maple Street Biscuit Company yep. for $36 million in cash. Cracker Barrel partnered with DoorDash in 2020 in response to restaurant closures due to the COVID pandemic. It was the restaurant's first partnership with a delivery service. Hmm. Cracker Barrel permanently added alcohol to its menu for the first time in September 2020. The company began testing a limited selection of beer, wine, and mimosas at 100 different stores in early 2020 before announcing that it will expand the offering to over 600 locations after receiving positive response from its customers. Here's where I stand. I work in alcohol. I support alcohol. I'll have a, I'll have a cocktail every now and then. I don't think they should have. It just the it, environment. It, it, yeah, it kind of, I was like, I, I don't go to Cracker Barrel thinking, I really wish I had a Miller Lite right now. It 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 almost cheapens. Yeah. To, in a sense. Yeah, it's just, it's, you went so long successfully without it. Like, I mean, there are establishments for alcohol. This was not one that I grew up thinking, you know what would really be good with my chicken and dumplings? A beer. A beer. No. Sweet tea is good with chicken and dumplings. Are you right. kidding me? Uh, so yeah, that's one one decision that I actually still to this day I'm like, mm, I wouldn't have made that decision. So recently in Q2 quarter two of 2023, the company reported a 933.9 million dollars in revenue. Uh, takeout delivery and catering made up 23 percent of sales. Wow! In May of 2024, Almost Cracker a Barrel quarter. Oh yeah. In takeout and catering alone. Uh, in May of 2024, Cracker Barrel revealed that 16% of their corner, their customer base, had not returned since 2020. Wow. The alcohol. That's true. It's, that's wild. I mean, that's I've returned. True. What upset me the most, okay, was they stopped carrying Stewart's Orange Cream Sick Soda. Because that when I was growing up, my drink of choice with my meal at Cracker Barrel was a frosty mug of the orange Stewart's orange creamsicle soda, and they don't they have other things like they have right. like red, they have the blue soda, just orange creamsicles gone. I was like, Dang, I'm never coming back. <laughs> That's it. Uh, it wasn't the beer for me. It was in. the orange creamsicle soda. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna actually take a quick break here. And when we get back, we're going to dive a little bit more into detail about the ins and outs of Cracker Barrel, the food, the gift shop, stuff like that. Uh, but we will get to that when Between Two Barrels podcast returns. I meant to ask as far as that stuff. Um, are we going to get stuff dropped into those spots at any point in time whenever we are taking breaks? Commercial? Yeah. For video or audio? Either. They're, they're in audio. Okay, just like, not on the video. Yeah. Okay. Like Rainforest has an ad, Adamus has an ad, the nuts thing has an ad. Um I have to create one now for Chubby's, the Unkind Raven and Martha's Market, since they're right part of the pear pad thing. Okay. But yeah, in the audio there's always commercials when we take a break. Gotcha. Just not in the video yet. Gotcha. I'm picking back up on this one. Okay. Welcome back, Legends. And if you are wondering, very similarly to how I was, whenever it comes to how some of these things work uh, in terms of the audio 
uh, what you see here on the YouTube video. Whenever we say, we're going to take a break and we're going to be right back. And if you're watching the video, no nothing is in between. It's just that, like it clicks straight back on over. Uh, if you do listen to the podcast version, of course, you will hear some uh, like radio ads, local, so to speak, local for local businesses and stuff like that uh, in those or in that particular cut. So uh, definitely some information. Businesses. Yeah, absolutely. Support our friends that you're going to wind up hearing in the different versions mm-hmm. of uh, the Between Two Barrels podcast show. So. Uh, back to Cracker Barrel, uh, food and gift shop. As a Southern themed chain, Cracker Barrel serves traditional Southern comfort food, often described as down home country cooking breakfast served all day. And there are two menus, one for breakfast and the other one for lunch and dinner. Now, since the re- first restaurant opened, the menu has featured a Southern specialties included biscuits, fried chicken and catfish as well as seasonal and regional menu items that were added during the 1980s and 90s. Now, like most all of us that have attended a Cracker Barrel at any point in time, you've had to wait at some point in time to be able to get in, and what better thing to have available uh, as a business for people to have to continuously walk around multiple times and see everything that's in there available is to have a gift shop or a store to walk around. Now, the gift shop itself sells gifts including simple toys representative of the 1950s and 60s, toy vehicles, puzzles, and woodcraft, speaking of the peg game. Also sold are country music CDs, DVDs of early classic television, cookbooks, baking mixes, kitchen novelty decor, and early classic brands of candy and snack foods, as well as all kinds of clothing now and many many other things at this point can oh you yeah find no matter what state you go into the, that local sports team is represented is represented in, in that barrel. cracker barrel yep mm-hmm. um you can't help but think that cracker barrel really paved the way for those things like your hatfields your opries your other shows in like myrtle beach areas and all that especially our opry gift shop I feel like was very heavily influenced by Cracker Barrel and that whole mentality of like, they're waiting around. Let's have this specific style of gift shop, you know, this general store looking gift shop. So if you come to this area, no matter if it's a show, if it's a theme park, if it's Tennessee legend distillery, the gift shop, the way that everything is set up, you have to say, was started by Cracker Barrel. Oh, Just for that sure. mentality of, um, we open up this general store looking gift shop, they gotta wait, they're gonna be waiting, that's how you get them. Yeah, that's how a lot of stuff is sold. I mean, with the live shows, and, and who's to say that... Uh, um. I got to go back and look at his name now. Evans? Evan. Dan? Yeah. Evans, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Who's to say that he didn't use a live theater or something like that to to use his inspiration for the gift shop and then vice versa? Who's to yeah, say that? Yeah, he might have been at the, the opera and been like... Modern theaters, you know, also have not, of course, used Cracker Barrel as inspiration. I know that we have used the terminology working here and both here and in the theater at times to say, oh, that's a Cracker Barrel gift shop. Cracker item. Barrel gift shop, yeah. And you know that that's something that will sell because they sell the crap out of them in Cracker Barrels. And it's because you want something that's going to be eye catching that people are going to want to interact with and especially kids will wind up picking uh-huh. up and wanting to take home That's with them get the parents because they're not all their toys are closed up in a box. They're all open for use. Yep. Like little water gun looking things and stuff. And then all of a sudden your kid's spinning on a thing and they're like, mommy, yep. can we get this? And use that same mentality there in the theater. Uh, okay. Well, we got to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes before the door even opens for us to be able to go in because there's always those people that want to be there super early. And then everybody starts showing up and you've got lines and people don't necessarily want to stand in line. They want to hang out in the gift shop and wait until the line dies down. Then they'll go in or 
get their ticket. You know, whatever the case may be, you've got something there to occupy someone while they're having to wait, whether it be to even get admittance to a show or into a theater or in what were our main, you know, topic of discussion, of course, being Cracker Barrel. You're waiting to be sat yep. so you can, you know, order your drinks, food, everything else. What better way to waste your time other than just sitting there, provide shopping for people. Yeah. So, so diving a little deeper, uh, talking about some location service and decor, uh, for much of its early history, Cracker Barrel actually located its restaurants along the interstate highway system, mm -hmm. which was brilliant. Uh, and the majority of its restaurants remain close to interstates and other highways today. Within a mile and a half to two miles, yes. usually. Uh, the locations are themed around the idea of a traditional southern U.S. general store from, like, the early 30s and 40s and stuff like that. Kind of like you would see in, like, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, you know, stay mm -hmm. out of the walls work. Uh, the locations, uh, uh, now, they also, uh, items used to decorate also are authentic artifacts. <laughs> kind of weird calling them artifacts. Right. Because when I think of artifacts, you're... I think of Indiana Jones, like the Ark of the Covenant or right. the Something Holy Grail. Right, something that's thousands artifacts. of years old. <laughs> uh, but they are kind of drive towards that early 1900s life. Yeah. Each location's exterior features a front porch lined with countless wooden rocking chairs, while the interiors all include five common decorations. A shotgun, a cook stove, a deer head, a telephone, and a traffic light. Every single one of them yes. all have that. And as we mentioned, every table has the wooden peg game. Yep. Now, the decor at each location also includes artifacts related to its local history of the area. Uh, for instance, in this area, you're going to get a lot of Appalachian artifacts. Yeah. Um, posters, old pictures. Um, Signage. There's a funny TikTok trend that w that is going around the last year or so where people will like while they're at they'll sneak in like in their purses and stuff like an old looking photo oh they've yeah had I've seen it, it. I know what you're talking it's about it's you but like the way they've they've edited it makes it look like a 30s photo or something and they'll like secretly like hang it on the lattice or put it in different places like like yep. it's part of history yeah, <laughs> when all it really is is like a a, a Canva edit of of you. Yep. <laughs> Getting to thinking about, it, I was like, that's kind of funny. Like, I would oh yeah, do, I would love to do I, something like I'd, that. I'd be about doing that. Absolutely. So the practice began with the first location, which was decorated by Lebanon, Tennessee, antique store owners Don and Kathleen Singleton, and now in Lebanon, Tennessee, is a what is it you called it a blueprint store? Yeah. So this location, this this entity, it does not serve food. It is not of uh, anything like that. What it is is, it's basically the, the blueprint. This this general store and this restaurant look. All it is, all these employees do, is shift things. They put, set. They they set, set a store. Yes, and log where everything is located and everything else and then it all gets packed up mm -hmm. and sent to wherever the new location that's being opened is mm -hmm. and they say this is how you do it and this is where it's put and throughout the year or season or whatever all this store does is just that like yeah okay fall's coming so what if we just you know what if this one's over here and when we Okay, spring's coming. Okay, let me do this. Yeah, majority. Hey, we have a new changes. partnership with Dolly, so we'll put a corner over here. So, and yeah. then they like send out, I guess, like a mass email blast, like, "Hey, all six hundred plus stores, this is what we're doing now." Yeah, this is your layout for this is your fall. Layout. This is your layout yeah. for spring. That's cool. I think it'd be cool to like go see it in action. Yeah. And uh, and like yeah, this interview is, them and pick their brains. And, like okay, all of this stays the same, but now we got to do you know a Texas store. Now we've yeah. got to do a New York store. We've got a Midwest store. We've got a Southeast store. We've got a uh Northwest store. We've got you know whatever the yeah. case may be. Yeah. All right. Well. All right. Since that's the case, well then they're looking up yeah. like Northwest practices and 
history and yep. like because if if I'm if I'm working at this Lebanon location and I'm from the southeast like I am, and they said, "Hey, we're opening one in in North Dakota." I don't know a thing about local North Dakota stuff, right? Or so I'm then researching and all that stuff to then build on this Lebanon location to take photos and all that and say this. Yep. This is so that's an interesting thing. So the Singletons, uh, stayed involved, uh, with decorating the stores until 1979. And they were followed by their son, Larry Singleton, who held the role until his retirement in 2019. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> Uh, items acquired by the company to be used in decorations are centrally stored in a Tennessee warehouse. Yep. Where they are cleaned, restored, and cataloged until needed. As of 2018, the facility held more than 90,000 items. Can you imagine that Cracker Barrel in Lebanon has one of the largest collection of antiques that are displayed in the country? In the country. And that's what they have just there. That's not including that's what all is across the country in the 600 plus locations yeah. of Cracker Barrel. That's crazy. So one of the largest antique collections in the world belongs that's to Cracker, Cracker Barrel. Barrel. That's funny. That's funny. And it's all Americana. Yeah. It's all, one of the yeah. largest, if not the largest collection of Americana antiques is owned Lord, by Cracker Barrel. Cars? show about that like american pickers have their own show and blah 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 yep. literally the largest going into cracker barrel's warehouse literally the and largest what can we find the largest artifact collection of, of americana <laughs> like yeah egypt and all that they have like the ark of the covenant and uh america's got cracker barrel's warehouse yeah <laughs> why don't you take us through move some over library of alexandria <laughs> we've got cracker barrel <laughs> lebanon <laughs> It is something that it's called Lebanon, though. Right. So, so some some fun recognition uh, that Cracker Barrel has received throughout the years. Uh, Destinations Magazine has presented the chain with awards for best chain restaurant, and in 2010 and 2011, the Zagat Survey named it the best breakfast. Which, for the Zagat Survey to with all the restaurants and everything that they review regularly mm -hmm. to say that this chain restaurant has the best breakfast is, is a, a, a huge milestone or achievement. Wonder who has the best second breakfast, second breakfast, 11 Z's afternoon tea. I know. I know. I know. The chain was selected by the outdoor advertising association, America or the OWA. <laughs> as the 2011 Obie, not Opie, not Opie, Hall of Fame Award recipient for its long-standing use of outdoor advertising, and it was also named the best family dining restaurant by a nationwide Choice in Chains consumer poll in Restaurants and Institutions magazine for 19 consecutive years. And of course, Cracker Barrel does have a rather vast fandom i said to begin with that uh our family especially the in-laws are huge fans of cracker barrel but tell us a little bit about that oh my wife would eat it once or twice a week if if we if we could yeah. if, if if allowed she'd eat it once or twice a so week. so for katie's birthday for you know it being a specialty event we decided sure. to go to a specialty place we went to the new roman table restaurant oh, okay. um which if you had been in there as it being Fridays and you go in there now, it is totally, really? totally different look, totally different vibe altogether. You're talking about a chain that's dead. Um, Fridays is, yeah, it's, is it done? It, I'm not sure if it's done, done, but it's close. And I think Fuddruckers is going to be yeah. joining in as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, some great food, um, but the pricing on the food and everything else, uh, we could do with, with the way that we normally eat at Cracker Barrel, and of course you're getting good portions sure. uh, in that, we could make three Cracker Barrel trips for what it costs for the one trip to, to Roma, table. Roma Table last night. So Everything's market price. <laughs> it did seem, it kind of seems like it. Uh, chicken parm was 20 bucks. Uh, she had a, a lobster shrimp ravioli. Yeah, lobster shrimp ravioli, I think, was 26. 
uh, we had a small plate uh, appetizer of fried calamari, and I think it was twelve dollars. Yeah, uh, and then we had this uh, one of the best things, honestly, in my opinion, was a limoncello cake mm. that was fantastic. Had some uh, really light um, homemade vanilla ice cream, vanilla bean ice cream, mm. uh, on top of this lemon. Uh, cake with lemon curd it, yeah that sounds good it was fantastic yeah. uh warm cake cold ice cream mm. good combination great combination so yeah let's talk a little bit about the loyalty for cracker barrel and its customers particularly travelers who are likely to spend more at restaurants than locals are from 1977 to 2017 married couple ray and wilma yonder drove a combined total of more than five million miles wow to visit all 644 Cracker Barrel locations. When the company opened their 645th restaurant in Tulantan, Oregon, in August 2017, on the 81st birthday of Ray Yoder, it flew the Yoders out to the grand opening and presented them with custom aprons and rocking chairs, among other gifts. That's... That's yeah. That's a fan base, baby. <laughs> that is Loyalty. definitely a fan, and that's <laughs> and that's something to aspire to. I mean, could you imagine if driving over five million miles to be able to experience going and visiting every single Cracker Barrel, and and say you got, uh, we'll go look and see what the the cheapest menu item is, so that way, oh yeah, if you were to order the the bare minimum cheapest times average forty four times six hundred and forty four the yeah. amount of money yeah they better fly your <laughs> ass fly out to <laughs> to the the grand Here's opening the bell and the ball for yeah. Cracker Barrel you also get a free tour of the warehouse right <laughs> you get to take home your choice of one, <laughs> one of the, of the items thousand. of the collection in the in the Cracker Barrel museum Absolutely. as it were but this has been a fun little uh regulation time dive into the world of Cracker Barrel. But we're going to cut the regulation time. Regula regulation is over. It is now time to cut the episode, and we are going to continue more of the deeper dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly of the greatest country restaurant and general store in the world on Patreon. And the way to become a Patreon member is easily. You go to the link up top, tldstudio66.com, go over to support, and it'll teach you how to do so. You can pick any tier whatever you want from as low as a cup of coffee a month, and you're going to get some fun bonus stuff behind the scenes, deleted scenes, bloopers, special items from Tennessee Legend Distillery, Studio 66, free swag, all that fun stuff if you become a Patreon member. And we want to thank our current Patreon members uh, for continuously supporting us throughout the month and uh, hope that some of you will join us over there on Patreon. Uh, but we are going to cut this right here. Be anything before we head out. Not right now, but the wheels are turning for some ideas for some uh, of our current Patreon members okay. and some something that we might do for uh, new Patreon yeah. members, uh, some sort of contest. So, great. yeah, make sure great. that you keep up and follow everything like Opie said, uh, so that way you can figure out what's, what's going on in Brian's brain uh, whenever it comes to something that could can be given away, some mm. sort of prize. For the Patreon participants. That sounds great. Well, thank Because you. I'm dry pasta in my pack. <laughs> the, <laughs> stay tuned for more. Thank you for tuning into this one. Stay kind to yourself. Stay kind to others. And as always, cheers to you, legends. Mm -hmm.